Hello there, and welcome to the Paris Set Me Free Creative Photo Critique. Yesterday, I was told, Sab, you must go to the Eiffel Tower tonight at 11. I had no idea why, but I went. I took my trusty camera, of course, uh, to see what was going to happen. And uh, sure enough, at 11 o'clock, um, as the French have uh, a habit of doing, something strange happened. The Eiffel Tower turned blue. Uh, I should tell you, if you want to see high quality images of the photos I'm going to talk about, do go to um, parissetmefree.blogspot.com if you're not already on the blog or, uh, or if you're watching the iTunes podcast. Um, now I took a lot of pictures of the Eiffel Tower uh, and what normally happens is you have a terrible decision to make. You have to get rid of all but one photograph. If you don't, then you're compromising your quality. But the problem is, if you've got a lot of shots, you normally fall in love with them. So, so what do you do? Well, I must admit this time I cheated. Because if you've got three shots you're in love with, you can just make a triptych. I did this, and I'm going to talk about each of the three shots. Let me show, what I, what, show you what I started with. I'm just going to take the uh, computer and turn it around so you can see my uh, my working space at the moment. Now here you can see um, uh, another computer with uh, the three shots that I finally decided on. And, uh, and here you can see another screen with some of the choice I had. So I chose my photographs, uh, my three photographs from that screen and uh, some others. So as you can see, uh, it's not so easy. I managed, and let me tell you um, how I did it, what I did. Uh, here's, here's the first shot I'm going to talk about. Let me try and not get a reflection for you. It's, um, I chose a, a triptych because I wanted to, to use, I used a few different techniques and I wanted to, to show them. And sometimes if you have one subject, it's stronger to show three different ways of representing uh, that subject. So that's what I did. Uh, here's the first one. Um, if you can see here, or if you're looking at the, um, the picture on one of the other places that it is, you can see there's actually two images of the Eiffel Tower, which is quite cool. And uh, there's a big one here. There it is. Uh, and there's, uh, there's a little one. By the way, did I tell you why they turned the Eiffel Tower blue? They turned it blue to celebrate the fact that France is now president of the, uh, the European Union for the next six months. God help us. So there it is. Um, by the way, I realized later that the other side of the Eiffel Tower was the side facing Trocadero was the side where they had a nice uh, ring of 12 uh, yellow stars. But um, I decided to take uh, to look at it from its backside, and uh, I don't care because when you're on the Champ de Mars near um, Ecole Militaire, you've got a fantastic uh, view towards the Eiffel Tower. You don't have the reflection of the Eiffel Tower in the fountain from Troc that you have from a Trocadero. Um, it's a less grand view, but it's a very impressive one. And because you have less stuff around, less people, less statues, you haven't got the lake you've got more flexibility to, to, to play with um, the tower itself and also the sun sets behind the tower in this case and in some of these shots you'll see a gorgeous uh, mm, no not so much these ones some of the earlier ones I took there's a gorgeous um, uh, fading out kind of effect rich deep blues and even even greens in the sky Anyway, um, I'm digressing. I've got five minutes left to tell you about the three pictures I chose. You have to try and do something different with the Eiffel Tower, otherwise it's just another Eiffel Tower shot. Because uh, the Eiffel Tower, if anything, is the symbol of Paris for me, represents a lot for me. I do try to, to take lots of photographs of it. Uh, I try not to uh, romanticize too much and call it her, but uh, sometimes uh, I slip. Um, 
but the, the trick is to, to do something different every time. Once you've used up all the techniques and all the clever things and silly things, well, one thing is to, to let, let the French do something weird with their own tower, which they do happen to do quite often. So, getting back to the point, uh, this shot has two, seems to has, have two Eiffel Towers. There's a big one here. And look, there's a little small one there. Isn't that funny? Now, you might be wondering, there it is, you might be wondering uh, how I did this. Uh, well, let me show you another shot before I tell you and um, see what you think. Here's another shot. Seems to be quite similar. You've got two Eiffel Towers again. You've got the big one here. And you've got a smaller one here at a nice, nice angle. Now, looking at those two shots together, uh, they weren't taken in the same way you might be interested to know. Similarly, but not. Can you guess? Well, this one, this one, is a straightforward double exposure. There were just two shots on the same on the same piece of film, effectively. If it had been in the old days, that would have been two shots on the same piece of film without winding the film on. This is the same thing, but it's digital. So I, just, I said to my camera, um, do a double exposure. I could have asked it to do a triple exposure, quadruple exposure, whatever. But uh, I said double exposure, that's enough. And um, for one of those, I zoomed in and tilted the camera one way. For the other one, I zoomed out and tilted the camera the other. Still being, being um, trying to make sure that this was going to be uh, in the shot, not too close to the corner, but pointing towards it. This one, the opposite. I had one where the big one actually went into the corner, but I preferred this one. So it's nice, you know, it gives a context. You've got more detail with the big one. You've got the whole overall picture with the small one. This one, well, on the face of it, it's similar, but it was a single exposure. It was taken um, on a very slow shutter speed because there wasn't much light, maybe two seconds. Um, should I be telling you this, giving away my secrets? Okay, uh, so at the beginning of the exposure, the two second exposure, all of these are handheld by the way, uh, beginning of the two second exposure, I held it for maybe half a second on mm, zoomed in on the big one, and then for the next second I zoomed out and turned the camera, and then I left, I held it for the last half second on, on the smaller one here. So what you've got is uh, a, a lovely zooming effect of these lights, almost like I don't know what, some sort of uh, fountain or or some or um, waterfall or something of light, all getting messed up here because of the movement. Uh, both of the images here are fuzzy, whereas here they're sharp-ish, although it was handheld, and um, they contrast nicely. And this is one reason why a triptych. Uh, is a good idea because you can show different ways of representing. You see it's the same, it's actually the same idea but one's fuzzy because it was all, I mean handheld but it was on the same exposure and somewhere in between the small Eiffel Tower and the big Eiffel Tower the lens was going zooming in, zooming in or out. This one not at all. Two straightforward shots they just happen to be on the same thing. Put them together you've got an interesting contrast. Let me look at the final one You've only got a minute, unfortunately. Here it is. Can you guess? Well, it's. I really like this one. It's. Um, it's got one image of the Eiffel Tower, which is smaller and uh, sharper. There it is. And you've also, if you look carefully, you've got a very fuzzy, big version. So fuzzy that it's just a, almost a blur, but you can see that it's the Eiffel Tower behind. You've also got. I was shooting through that famous um, wall with um, the word peace in lots and lots of different uh, languages. In one photo, the photo of the little Eiffel Tower, I focused on the tower so the writing on the glass was fuzzy. In the other one, I focused on the writing, as also zoomed in, which made the big version of the Eiffel Tower fuzzy. It's on a double exposure, um, tilted the camera as well, and you've got something really nice. I'll put it in my um, my triptych and end up with something like this. Ta -da! Depuis que je suis à Paris, le jour et la nuit, je suis gris. J'ai compris la douceur de vivre. Je suis fou de joie, je suis ivre. Depuis que je suis à Paris.